Hey everybody, it's Mike from Dungeons and Diving here. Uh, welcome back for another reverse engineering tutorial. Today we're going to go ahead and expand upon our Hello World tutorial that we did last time. We're going to go ahead and grab this uh, Pico CTF binary that I grabbed from Pico CTF, <laughs> and we're going to reverse engineer that to the point where we can get the flag to submit to Pico CTF. I'm not going to show you which binary it is that I'm reversing today. I want you to walk through it and if you're going to worry about the points on Pico CTF, I take the steps and actually practice it. I'm still using the same project as last time as our Hello World program. I've just dragged and dropped the Pico CTF binary into here and I'm going to open it up. I've already analyzed this before but I didn't save it so you can walk through the process. The same as last time, I'm going to use the defaults. You're going to see the progress bar in the bottom right corner but it happens almost instantaneously. As I stated before, typically we're going to see program entry is the start we're not worried about that today. This is not anything malicious going on, so I'm not going to bother going to start. It's just a bunch of C runtime stuff being set up. Uh, we're going to go to the functions, and then we're just going to start with main. This program is a it's a, a single function. It's just everything's done in main, so it's not a big deal. We're not going to see a whole lot of linkages. We'll get to that in the next tutorial, though. You'll notice that I have the decompiler set up so that the window is hidden for it. Um, the reason being is because the flag is right there. Super simple. Um, so if you're going to be doing this, it would be super simple to just grab it right from that window. However, the point of this tutorial is a little bit of RE practice. All right, so we're going to see our prologue set up here. Um, as I mentioned before, you have a push and a move uh, just to set up the base pointer and the stack pointer. However, in this case, we have a sub RSP hex 10. And what that's doing is that's giving us 16 bytes of data for local variables. Um, and you're going to see those two in this statement right here, uh, where we have uh, two local variables set up here as local C and local 18. Those are just names that Gijar gave it. And all that it's doing is taking EDI and RSI and just shoving what they pointed to into here. I don't know what that data was. That's part of the C runtime library stuff that's set up before main is called. So typically, you'll see a lot of registers will push stuff to the stack. That way, at the very end, it can pop them back off in order to restore the values that were contained. That way, when we return to the previous calling function, you know that calling function has that data again. In this case, I don't see that anywhere in here. All right, this next statement, this move into RAX has a pointer to flag. You know, so if you're if you're doing this for a CTF, um, that could be a hint for you, but it also could be like a little bit of a honeypot leading you down a, a trail that's not the right flag. In this case, yes, it is. <laughs> so go ahead and you can just double click on it there. We're going to we're going to move along. We'll come back to the flag. Um, we're going to move through the the assembly code here first before we move along. Um, so the first thing that's going to be pushed into RX is this flag. But if you look here, um, it's it's actually being shoved into RSI because we need it into this register. Uh, RA, RAX is not going to be a register that we're going to pass variables to a function call. So RSI is going to hold our flag or at least the address to it. Um, we're going to get the address of another string. So in C, when we're calling printf, um, we get the first thing that we pass to printf is the string formatter. Uh, so it's going to be the flag is colon and then this percent %s. That percent %s means to the system that, hey, there's another variable coming. It's going to be a type string. So go ahead and grab that. And it's typically printf, your formatter, comma, and then variable. But in the case of assembly, it's going to go to RDI for the first parameter, and it's going to go to RSI for the second one. So this percent %s is going to tell the system to just refer to RSI, grab that address, and then it'll print out our, our flag. And you can see, maybe see it here, it's in a, it's in a gray, but it's incomplete, so, so you don't get to cheat just yet. All right, so again, it's just, this statement is just zeroing out EAX. After this call to print F is made, the flag is going to print to our screen, and then what you're going to do is we're going to see EAX would have the return value of printf, um, but again, right here, we're zeroing it out one more time. And the reason this one exists, like this, this first one, it's not a big deal for us, but the second one is because we're going to return zero from this, from this main process again as well. Uh, so we do have to have that EAX being set to zero. Now, the epilogue, at the very end of it, if you remember from the previous video, I said that you can either have a push, move, and potentially a sub up here, 
and then it's going to be the reverse order down here for the epilogue. Or if it's super simple, sometimes uh, compiler optimization will just have the statement leave in there. It's a single byte as opposed to however many bytes it takes to build up the epilogue otherwise. And then we return. All right, so now that we've walked through this assembly, you can see how the program works. The key to this wasn't really just to see how it works, but you need to see how it works in order to find where this flag is. So Ghidra makes it super simple for us. I can just double click on it. I can double click on it here. Again, that means that I need to know, you know what it is. This, this flag was just a keyword for us. It won't always be there, but then you can see that flag literally just points to this address anyways. So had I clicked on this SPICO CTF before when I was loading it into the register, it would have just taken me there. And you can see that the entirety of this flag is just a string type that shows Pico CTF and then using your first file and then a bunch of characters afterwards. And if you want to see the different data types, we can clear the code bytes there. And you can see that each individual byte along with its ASCII hex character here is right there as well. Um, to set that back up, we're going to go right click on it, go to data, and it's going to be a terminated C string. If you're using wide characters, it would be a Unicode. So that's just the easy way to restore it. So here's our CTF flag. For Pico CTF, we, we submit this whole thing right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the decompiler again. And you can see, and the, the reason why I hit it at the beginning is because it gives us the, the string right there without having to do any of the work. So for Pico CTFs, if the compiler can't pick it out, or if there's lots of functions that hide it, there is a quick way that you can do things. Uh, so in this case right here, Pico CTF requires a prefix of Pico CTF on their flags. That makes it super easy to search for it in cases where it's just written in plain text. Um, you may get flags that require some math or manipulation in order to generate them on the screen, but in cases like Pico CTF where this binary specifically has it embedded, make sure that you clicked on your listing here, not your decompiled main because it'll fail there. We go here, search, you're gonna program text, you're gonna type in Pico CTF up here, all flags, search all. And what that's going to do is that's going to get you a reference to every time that it's either in the binary or there is a reference to that location. And so, for example, in this case right here, we knew that this is a string. Um, so that DS is the data string. You just double click on it there, close the windows, and it takes you right to that CTF flag. So that's a quick win on this one, which is actually the way that I discovered what the flag was when doing this capture the flag as a practice event. Now that we have the flag, in this case, we would submit it to Pico and get some points on the leaderboard there. But as far as this video is concerned, that's gonna wrap up our quick CTF. And we'll go ahead and move along to a, a little bit more in-depth program for our next tutorial. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.